Good day, Observation Deck viewers. In this episode, I would like to introduce you to David of SPLSPro.com. He has spent an extensive amount of time researching and attaining many of the aspects of personal private remedy and currently runs his website, which is listed in the description below. This is an introduction, part one, if you will, chat with David, and I expect David to be back on the show with more details and further in-depth discussions on various subjects we could put under the umbrella of remedy. What I would say to you viewers is place any questions you may have in the comments below for future episodes that we can field at David after you have watched this episode and I will collate them for a later episode with him and he can give you his opinions on the question. Obviously, that does not mean seeking advice nor explaining any personal cases that you might have going on, but simply a guide to some of the areas we may be able to cover that will be of interest to my viewers. That would be you. One area we will be covering on a later episode is when bailiffs come a knocking and how to deal with them lawfully. Well, with that being said, I hope you enjoy this introduction to the creator of SPLSPro.com and gain some insights as to the work that he is doing. I'll see you on the other side. Um, hi, Observation Deck viewers. This week, I've got a special guest, a guy I've been trying to get on for months, but he, uh, he's a very, 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 very busy man. Um, but we finally managed to catch up with each other, and hopefully this will not be, it, although it's the first time, hopefully it won't be the last time. So without you guys having to listen to me rant, because you know who I am from the Observation Deck, um, I want to introduce David, and uh, we'll get a bit of background off him first, and then find out what he's all about in terms of remedy, um, attitudes, and our own personal standing. But uh, rather than me trying to second guess what David's going to say, David is from uh, the website, correct me if I'm wrong here, David, but splpro.com. And he's based here in the United Kingdom. I will leave a link in the description below so you can go visit his website. I have and I am a member and I suggest you become a member too. But before we get there, let's introduce David and see what he's got to say for himself. So, David, first question. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm uh, honoured and privileged to be here um, officially now. We've had uh, a few chats um, privately, so um, thank you. It's an honour and a privilege, and um, I will uh, it can encapsulate by saying uh, I am um, I'm into protection and reservation of rights, uh, keeping clean hands, and I'm not on about sanitizer and um, sterilised clean hands with soap. Um, but we do we do um, have a, an ethos at SPLSPreO.com. Yeah, he was close with that, and uh, and thank you for that little uh, you know uh, advert there and uh, for the links. Um, we, uh, we have a free Facebook domain as well, so it's not, when I say clean hands, those that may find themselves in hard times, um, pennies, promises, credits are a bit hard to find. If you're not getting furloughed <laughs> or you've lost your employment recently, then there is a, a free access point, um, YouTube as well, um, Facebook, and then the core of the work, um, the, the, the main private trust that we have is um, at the dot com, the website, and uh, the public trust we have is um, is um, on Fedbook, Facebook, um, just so we can uh, we can facilitate everybody. We have a you know a sacred contract to try and keep um, and, and much like Anubis um, at the end of the, the time, the feather and the heart being weighed. I'm aware of what may come when I exit this realm, and I'd like the feather and the heart to try to you know not just because of my soul, but we have a strong principle. Yeah, um, and I uh, I'm a great admirer of your work and channel, your attitude to 
um, the areas that we also tackle and have been tackling um, for years is um, is how long the dot com, the private trust, has been there. But I, man, David, have been uh, immersed in um, common law. Um, you know, John Harris, the first introduction into into the realms of RIP to that uh, that great man and British Constitution Group and um, common law type uh, meetings in areas going back um, from John Harris, what's that, 2000 ish, uh, early 2000s and onwards. So I've had a, a steady progression through the usual um, um, areas of free man constitution. Magna Carta, I've, I've looked at that, you know, and I found it to be futile. Um, if you do use that, not you, yourself, or brother, but others out there, each to their own. For the purposes of clarity, speaking English, um, please do not convert any of my words to legalese or think that I am speaking in legalese. Uh, you know, it's a little disclaimer. I'm using Oxford Collins style language. I'm not a Roman, I'm not a bow person. And uh, I've, I've been into courts and I've discharged effectively certain things for others um, with the private trusts that we have there. And uh, initially, um, some time ago, uh, two years was spent in a high court scenario in Sheffield and um, lots of thousands of pounds getting access to my property. You may find the words I use and the way um, to the viewers that is uh, that describes the, uh, the ones that are watching. You may find my words peculiar, weird or, uh, you know, um, shocking. Some of you may find them a delight, but I don't try and speak like um, something I'm not. I don't think I'm something I'm not, and I don't try to use words to, to sound street. Um, I try to speak principled correctly and proper, properly. So um, if you're across the ponds, um, you know, um, you will find that we try to meet you in the middle there and uh, officers, troopers, etc. you know, we are uh, judges, the courts and whatnot. It's pretty much transferable, but uh, I was in a Crown Court environment for a long time getting access to my property, the fruit of my loins. And uh, I got rinsed. I got the uh, the mick taken out of me by a barrister who committed personage and barratry. I later find out who represented my legal person, Mr. David. Um, and uh, I got a court writ at the end of it. And uh, I thought that was it. That was the job done. When I heard from my own mum, when you go to court, David, they speak a language that looks like English. It spells like English. It sounds like English, but it's called legalese. And it has completely different meanings to what's in the Oxford and the Collins and what you know of now. And I went, you mean I spent two years and 20 grand in the court, jumping through hoops, listening to the judge, doing what I was told. And they wasn't even speaking the same language as me. She went, that's correct. It's your legal personality, your persona, it's a little bit of Latin there. And I went, no way, this is, this is uh, un, you know, incredible. But uh, my mum, she wouldn't lie to me, you know, and uh, I, uh, I researched it. <clears throat> and uh, I'm closing down now. I thought, this is incredible. This is a joke. I thought it was real. I thought it was serious. I, I, I was scared of them a little bit. I was fearful, you know, man's property and rights and access, uh, retention of rights. I gave them all away. I employed somebody to do something that if I was educated correctly and properly um, at some point before, or I'd done the research or I'd had a, a document to read, I could have stood half a chance. Well, I know now I could have done uh, 500 times better than my court appointed barrister at the time that actually scared me as well. You know, when she was there, there was a lady judge, lady barrister and a dad, a man, you know, a male figure. I felt uh, belittled, outnumbered, lost, fearful and when you're fighting for access for your blood and you're a good dad and you've done nothing wrong um in this country uh, england england and wales not the uk not the uh, not great britain but in the law of england and wales dads come secondary to their property if the family breaks down the law actually says the resident parent by default is mum it's it's a horrendous ordeal so when, was this um, David you for you court. your your baptism of fire, as it were, into the into the um, <laughs> the, to, to, into the realm of remedy? Yeah, you could say that. You could because say that, my man. It, yeah. it, it seems to me that, um, and, and like myself, I've 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 had run-ins uh, with different corporations and organisations where 
something inside of me said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being legally and lawfully bullied here. You know, they're using, they're, they're using legislation acts or stuff against me in a way that places me, I mean, I, I, I mean, it places me as a victim of the system. Um, and um, a few years ago, when I had my own accident and I had to face a court case for something that wasn't anything to do with me, and I stood my ground for the very first time, not knowing any of the stuff that I've, I, I, I know today, and to my utter amazement, even though it took 18 months, two years, I won both cases against the local council and a very well-known high street bank who was asking for copious amounts of money from me from an original 250 pound debt. By the time I got to the bank, because I was in hospital for an elongated period of time, by the time I came out of hospital, obviously no earnings, totally incapacitated, learning to walk again, that 250 had turned into 12 and a half thousand, you know, and, wow. and it was like, well, hang on. I haven't spent a penny in all the time I've been in hospital and you say, I owe you 12 and a half thousand. Of course, that was my baptism of fire because, you know, I mean, update folks, I, they got fined 500 quid. I got 2,500 compensation and certainly didn't pay them back 12 and a half grand, you know? So <laughs> the, the, I, I think mm. that the people like ourselves and, and plenty of others, um, if they've had that baptism of fire, um, <laughs> I, I think it goes through um, almost like a grief process because you, you know, you get angry at first, then you, 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 you go into like kind of like a depression and then all of a sudden, if you're going to give up as the victim side of it, you go into almost acceptance. And I stopped short of the acceptance and something stuck in my crawl personally said, no, this is wrong and it cannot continue. You know, and, and, and I mean, this was yeah. about 10 years ago. So up until then and to this day, even though I've looked at Remedy, I, I, I really didn't make it public or known. But, but only in the last year for the observation deck viewers, because obviously the, the, uh, the coronavirus and, and, and all the rest of the stuff, I'm thinking it's, it's, ne it's needed now more than ever in, in, in terms of other people standing up for themselves. But what do you say to the question, David, that, and, and this is my opinion, but I'd like to get your, your take on it, that, that sovereignty, um, and I don't mean it necessarily in the legal, lawful term of the word, all right? But yeah. In my mind, sovereignty is a state of mind, body, and spirit, rather than something that you claim on a piece of paper. What, what, what's your angle on that? It runs deep. Initially, um, I'll, uh, yeah, thank you for that. Brilliant. Uh, I consider myself an ambassador of sovereignty. I have spoken to a few about this, um, and Santos Bonacci included extensively um, behind the scenes and, and, and on chat. So um, initially, when I, um, 2015 November, um, when I opened and uh, uh, founded a Facebook group called uh, uh, Cyber Solicitors, it went through a change. And let me just explain this to get to, to answer you. It went through to uh, um, from solicitors to uh, sovereign. Um, you know, paralegals, and at that point, uh, many mans in the free man and common law and Magna Carta area pointed out to me that I cannot say I am sovereign in any capacity. Um, it's the Queen's business, and it's only the Queen that's sovereign. And I had to point out a legal maxim there that says one cannot give, not that I am a legal and I'm not speaking legal, but there are rules and, uh, you know, logic, Dr. Spock mentality here, not so much uh, legal system, but one cannot give something which one does not possess to summarize and that's real that's practical in real life in any way shape or form you can't offer and promise something to somebody which you do not have you will not have or you don't possess so i uh, explained that when the queen qe2 was coronated and the uh, i'm not a people i'm not a person i have a person but the people of the united kingdom which is a paper-based trust <laughs> they gave allegedly the queen sovereignty so if we at the coronation point there in the historical you know uh, part of, of, of uh, england and wales and the people of the uk giving that to the queen then they can't give something which they do not have and um, jesus and um, those of you that are uh, biblical and religious you will see that there is a prince of peace and um, an advocate and surety that could be referenced as sovereign as well 
but um, the, see, so there are quite a few layers. Royalty think they're sovereign. Um, you know, religious um, hierarchy think that they're sovereign in their capacities of. But to be, as you've said, to be to be precise, um, a sovereignty is uh, is is about uh, re retainment of rights, knowing thyself and uh, growing thyself and showing thyself. For uh, mental health cannot be fully um, attained. Good, strong mental health. Um, if you don't know who you are, what you are, when you are, and why you are, we are somewhat of a species with amnesia. So to be sovereign, um, souverain, is a, is another way. I've looked at Romanian and Swedish and, and European, you know, where many types of sovereignty. As uh, we've been doing this for some six years now, and initially it was like the trust technology laughed at and frowned upon. Um, you will have heard parliamentary sovereignty. Um, be mentioned a lot uh, in this recent time but you cannot be as a ward of the state in your public commercial um, licensed capacity in business that's not sovereign at all to be private and to be graceful and to be uh, and to be lawful not legal legal is the undoing of god's uh, of god's law um, i'm not here to preach and i'm not here to insult anybody's religion or faith or, uh, you know, we, we've got a universal non-sectarian remedy um, for the three major faiths to move you from the general public, your legal um, public person, to your lawful private man. And I offer that, we offer that, uh, um, you know, as your sovereignty for Islam, Christianity, and somewhat Judaism, but Judaism kind of with the, the Torah are more close to the reality of sovereignty than Islam and um, Christianity, but the Abrahamic faith there is uh, is about getting back to the source. Um, I'm a hemeticist, so I am um, finding that the blood of Zeus may run through my veins, and Hermes, Thoth, and um, Hermes Trismegistus, or Toth, Thoth, and Mercury is go through my veins. So being honourable, private, man of law is how I consider myself to be able to articulate to say I'm sovereign. If, I, if I'm in a courtroom ever before a judge, an arbitrator, um, my honour, and I, I, I try to uh, discharge the charges by saying I am the, the leading sovereign man of England or the, the, the Republic of New Britain, it will not save your ass legally, may I say. It's yeah. about uh, a, a mental state and how you, how you perceive yourself. So I'll yield it there. I think I've said enough. <laughs> Okay, so as far as, okay, can you give the, um, my viewers a kind of explanation then of your understanding of the difference between public and private yeah, in, in, yeah, in, everyday, yeah, exactly. in, in everyday life, as it were, because I think there's a lot of confusion out there. Like, for instance, I had a phone call today. I'll give you an example of what I mean. I had a phone call yeah. today from somebody who wanted some help and said, look, Rob, I run a business here in the United Kingdom. I said, right. He said, now I know that there's a movement going on at the moment, an underlying uh, uh, movement of a whole bunch of people. They are going to open for business irrespective of what the current laws, legislations under coronavirus 2020 is concerned. They're going to open the business and they're going to stand their ground. My question was, and not that I'm, I would stop anybody of making that kind of protest because I think that absolutely they should. But what concerned me is I pointed out to this individual. Um, I said, well, look, here's the problem. I said, you're going to stand there and go, I don't contract and I don't consent. I said, but from my point of view, you are running a commercial business. You're paying taxes, you're paying ground rent, you're paying um, uh, property tax and all the rest of it. You have already contracted. So how can you help? And this is where the confusion comes in. How can you say, I don't contract when clearly you do because you're standing on your own property in commerce? Did you see what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, and, and they're yeah. getting this like, I am a private person. Yeah. Well, not while you're standing on commerce, you're not. You're in the public. Yeah, so you can, could, yeah, you, right. could you help to clarify the idea of it? Or, or, or have I thrown you too much of a curveball on that one? No, I love it. I'm able to, uh, to field many and we do this. I've done this quite a bit. So I've got two things to say. I'd like to answer what you've said and then touch upon the common law, the common law area and then the private with um, the, the, the way that I operate and how I implement the instrument. So, 
two words beginning there with I, implement the instrument. So you can be, we call it on the land. To be private, you are on the land. Um, and to be commercial, you're at sea. On the land is the law, the Abrahamic uh, laws, if you like, the law, the true law. There are many types of law, ecclesia, admiralty, maritime, common law, uniform commercial codes. We're not here to talk about them, but later on, we, I will be back and maybe you can come on to my humble little channel as well and it would be an honour for me to, to bring you the other way and for you to go and say hello to the, the scribes on Indy. So um, we implement the instrumentation. So until you, you achieve administration effective to take you into the private where you administer your estate, the biological estate, the physical estate, the blood and the bones and the, uh, you know, that's the paperwork, your person, then we're given a way out. Now, John Harris, I mentioned my first gateway, um, RIP, to the, to the passing of that man. Um, and he allegedly, I don't know, it's what I've heard, I wasn't around then and it was before my time in, in the game, he, uh, he gave up the certificate of birth, the birth certificate, the, the bit that you get when mum and dad register you with the general registry office and the bondsman. So if you give that paper up, that certificate, which I, I now know is the equitable instrument, is you hold it up to the light, has a watermark through it, denoting a charge, a current, that is um, coming with a, a warning at the bottom in bold. I believe it's the same for most continents and land masses. Warning, um, this is not to be used as evidence of, as, of, as, of, of, of identity. Do not use this as evidence of identity. And we all, when we leave um, the academy, the indoctrination camp, go and get maybe a bank account or as, as you get a job when you're 16, 18, 21, depending on your where you are, if you're across the pond or you know, how old you are, I suppose, to when you did this, you will implement the instrument. And nobody told you that uh, the birth certificate, your person, your persona is not you. And, uh, you know, we use that and we say that it is us and we give, we get a bank account, we get, uh, you know, the national insurance number from the IMF and we go along in life believing that that's us. So that's your public um, persona that we could say, Mr. David, you know, uh, Jeremita, date of birth and a surname. If you start separating that, um, and if you are running a business and um, somebody says, uh, ah, you shouldn't be open, you, you've been ordered to close, yeah, I would say, well, are you ordering me or my person? You know, I have, a, I have, a, I don't know, a, I have a business to run and I have mouths to feed. So uh, I am, I am going to stay. You know, this is quite a, a technical way scenario for you to ask. But if somebody charges me, you know, or um, says that I am duty bound to into the common law of obligations, then they they would talk to Mr. David, Mr. David of the Jeremita and it will be all capitals and I will separate that and say, no, I am not that. That's my person. So that's an easy way for me to put it. So even if you are out in the commercial realm and an officer, an agent tries to lay charge and claim, as long as you know that you're not a date of birth, my date of birth is hearsay. I was very little when, uh, when I was born. So uh, born, not birth, ships of birth. And my surname, it's not my surname, it's my father's. I have a family and, a, and an estate name. So, um, my name, a name begins with a capital letter and um, I don't subscribe to a name because it's an object to thing in Oxford linguistics. Um, it's a noun. A noun is an, describes an object or a thing and it starts with a capital letter. So I am not a mister because a mister man, um, not unlike Roger Hargreaves there, is a mister is a title, Ms, um, Lord, Laird, you know, um, Sir, these are all titles of which mister is the very lowest so you have a title afforded you i reject that title i don't have a name and we separate so how can you prove that you are not a name well in law um and this is where we get into the fun parts now i suppose if you're telling me officer or this you're enforcing a letter somebody is saying you're going to pay for this and we're going to take and charge this man where's the proof that i and this man. And if you, you notice when somebody gets served a court writ, um, what will happen is, cunningly, they will approach somebody and say, hello, are you Mr. John Smith? Um, yes, I am Mr. John Smith. You've been served. So you see what happened? You volunteered. They check. Let's check if he's Mr. John Smith. Are you? Yes. Oh, he's, he's agreed to be John Smith. 
you now play that part of John Smith. Uh, go rewind selector. Hello there. Are you Mr. John Smith? No, I'm not. Who may be asking and what reason is it for? Oh, I'm a sheriff from the court and I've got to serve Mr. John Smith. Oh, okay then. Another example, telephone call. Hello, and I answer the phone. And it's not a phone, but hello. Hello there, is that Mr. David? Uh, yes, it is. Oh, hello, it's uh, Sue from the uh, X-Bank Collection. We were looking for £6,000 owed on a credit card. The phone rings again. Hello, is that Mr. David? No, who's calling, please? A caller, identify yourself. Oh, it's Joan from the Collections Revenue at such and such bank. Um, would you... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm the data controller for Mr. David. How may I direct your call? Oh, we can't speak to the data controller. We can only speak to... So it's, it's about implementing... the. Yeah. And if we give this knowledge out to our scribes and to, to, to ones that uh, don't know this, it's about retention of your rights. We will... The, the barrister at the court did not retain my rights at all. In law, there are maxims, and he who doesn't know he has any rights, therefore has no rights. That's not an actual maxim, but that's a principality of the of the procedure rules that they have. So it's not very fair. You know, it's it's the language. It looks like English. It writes like English. It sounds like English, but it is in English. It comes from black swords in black. It's very dark, and I'll, I'll yield there. <laughs> Okay, so on, on the same subject then, David, how easy is it for somebody, whether it's in the UK, uh, the States, or any, any, let's just stick to Commonwealth countries here just to make life easier, but how easy is it for yeah. someone to, do they need to separate, as long as they've separated those two entities in the way that you've said, in other words, the way they act, the way they carry themselves, the knowledge that they have, or... Is there another step where it says, well, if you want to make this official, you've got to follow this route in terms of documentation to, to, to actually give, ev I mean, do you have to give evidence? That's what I guess I'm saying in substance that I am who I say I am, whether you calling me a person or well, actually, no, I can make my own statement and I'm a living man. And that's not my, th that's a title that was given to me. But I'm, I'm stating here that that's not me. I'm the agent. I can be the agent for that man. That's not a problem. You know, that mm. person that you're talking about. But I, I'm not that thing. I mean, you know, are we looking at documentation to prove the point here? Or if you can stand your ground, is it good enough to just actually push that away from you using your own linguistic skills and knowledge? Well, that's a, comp it's a layered answer, and I'm going to give the, uh, the easiest one first, then, and I'm going to let you know that we have, if I may be so brash, um, let you know what I've done to, uh, to achieve what you've just said, but it's taken a long time, and I'm going to just paraphrase. But uh, um, you uh, may or may not be aware that there are, um, there are public common laws. When I say common law now, these are the laws that come out of Westminster legislation, statutory legislation, that is, uh, it's uh, coming out of Westminster, Whitehall and Westminster, and um, it is mandated upon all legal persons by default, presumption and assumption. So the uh, after 1066, 1067, a deal was done. William the Conqueror could not get into London, um, inner London, you know, the bit that's got the, uh, the square mile and uh, oh, he's yeah. got some postcode and police. So you go back to 1066 and 1067 for this. And um, there is, uh, there is, um, you know, um, <laughs> there is a lot that I could say there. But I'll leave it at that point, and we move forward from. And um, there is a, there is a temple church there as well that you need to know about. Everybody, what is the temple church? I'll leave that there. And the ones that in the chat room, you can, you can put in, and we'll give you a chance to, to play, you know, parlay with us forward into today. From that point, we have now um, Roman secular. Um, codes that are coming out upon the person. So if you are religious and you are in um, a Catholic confirmed position, it's going to be a lot easier for you to do this. But that's, you know, I've got a remedy. We have a remedy. Our trust for all, as I said, all religions, main um, faiths, the three major faiths. But to get out of the uh, a default assumption and presumption, you would implement the instrumentation, passport, driving license. Yes, name is family name, date of birth, um, passport, driving license, and birth certificate. So um, man is born, not birth. The citizen um, is what's on the British passport there. Um, and a person um, is on uh, a UK citizen on the passport and a, a, a citizen 
person is the birth certificate. So you use those, and anybody that makes a claim in English law, in a, in a courtroom um, especially, or uh, in your paperwork, your paperwork can precede you, um, you would ask them for proof that they are, you know, he who makes the claim is obligated and obliged to provide the burden of proof. So they won't really argue. They'll say that you are a person, an arresting officer or a, a, a judge or um, the legal profession. They refuse to um, acknowledge their own gain. They will never let on that they know. So I would argue that all barristers know um, and, um, and have the private side um, locked off and they um, like an actor um, equity equity is the uh, is the actors guild that looks after actors and equity equity you'll know from mortgages and finance and in the yeah. in the in the monetary mechanic side and we have equity in the house we can get another mortgage on it because we have an equitable amount that's uh, that's within the bricks and mortar so correct that is equity there but equity um, the, the, the the lord in the scriptures gave man the world, the realm, nobody paid for the earth, nobody had to uh, get a license, but th there are ways now that we, we have restricted access to things. So it goes into religion, it goes into legal, but we go from legal and we use religion. Why? Well, because there's a, there's a, there's a codified handbook in the Old Testament. We look at who wrote the New Testament and um, we, look at, uh, we look at many things there. When you go to court, you'll be asked if you want to make an attestation or if you'd like to swear on a copy of the Bible. We are, of course, a Christian nation over here, England and Wales, not the United Kingdom, and not the uh, United Kingdom of Great Britain. So there's England, the UK, and then there's um, the United Kingdom of Great Britain. So there's a lot of tearages from the Anglo-Saxon beginning, and uh, you've got to look at the wars and the monarchies to how we've got to where we've got now, what language we speak, the church is within, the Latin is used in a court, so you've got to look at the chattel and what chattel are, chattel, chattel mortgages. Have a look at what a chattel mortgage is. Have a look at cattle and chattel. Have a look at flock, the folk. Folk is an anagram of flock. The flock, the shepherd, the shepherd and the flock. We, you and your channel, my good man and I, we shepherd the ones that are lost, the lambs, the lambs. So we can argue and articulate through getting to the end told you it was a bit layered and, and I'm paraphrasing here and going slowly on purpose but you can um, when um, one of the uh, the prophets asked the burning bush who are you you know when I go down from Mount Sinai with these ten commandments and I go to my people who shall I say has uh, has given me these uh, these commandments and the burning bush replied to Moses was it hey, was this Mount Sinai I am so I am I think therefore I am a last will and testament will help you um, in some ways. It's not the be all and end all, but it proves that you have a will. If you have a will, it's, it's a great, you know, a free yeah. will is a great way to start. And, um, and, and, and explaining through your paperwork, your paperwork will precede you. Talk is very cheap. So um, I have an instrument called evidence of life, essence and incarnation that's just been, that's just been basically created um, by our private trust. And we, we are incarnate and um, we are blood and flesh, children of the creator. We are men of the realm, children of the creator. And we have a person, which is over here, in the form of birth certificate, passport, and driving license. That's the instrumentation that we will implement. We will not follow Brother John Harris and rescind that back to the Queen without, or the monarchy, wherever you are, um, without asking the higher levels of government and through the Vatican, the church, the archbishop, whichever way you want to go, for alternative provisions. What do you mean alternative provisions? Well, earlier I said the birth certificate is, uh, is watermarked. It has a number in the top right-hand corner. We believe it looks like it's an equitable instrument. The signature would be the equitable asset, a sign of nature. When you see a celebrity, you get an autograph. So there are two different things there to pay attention to. And um, the, the equitable instrument may be a bonded financial instrument much like money has a watermark through it not because it needs to be proven to be authentic but any instrument that's financial generally has a mark through it and has a certain denomination and um, character about it to distinguish it from standard paper um, and also to, for, to stop counterfeiting for its validity bonds basically i'm talking about yeah. so yeah. You, you could swap that maybe um the bible 
sorry, I've taken the father's name in, in vain. You know, uh, are you Mr. Jeremita? No, who's asking? Hello? Miss, no, I'm not Mr. Jeremita. What, it's always a bad thing to say yes to because if they're asking you if you're Mr. Smith, Jeremita, etc., they don't know who you are and they're going to lead you down the path of debt and um, the death, the sin, the misery. So you can, you can look at the evidence of life, essence, incarnation, um, in the Bible, Jesus is saying there that two witnesses will make a fact. So if two witnesses make a fact in a court of law of England and Wales, um, two sworn affidavits or two test testimonies, testa from above, testy, the boys have testes between the legs, and the testa comes from the mouth. So if they testify in a courtroom, that will be sufficient for the judge to hear two facts, made, two witnesses making the facts. So we have to be... Boxing clever. So I've got, I've, when we, I've got a question when we for you when you come to the, very cheap. Uh, Yeah, I've got a question <laughs> for you, Dave, because you've brought up a good point yeah. there in terms of the two witnesses. Um, now, I've had a lot of people come to me, and I'm sure you're well aware of this situation, um, more so now than ever, is that with, <laughs> with all this extra time due to um, what I believe is unlawful lockdown procedures by any and all governments. But due to this extra time people have got, they've spent a long time, uh, a lot of time in 2020 and now 2021. The question that I get fielded quite often is um, about notary publics or um, as opposed to public notary. Well, it's public notary. Sorry, I get the two mixed up sometimes. Yeah. Um, but the point being is if, if, if two witnesses are good enough on um, a notice or a document or an affidavit, all right, is there, because a lot of people are hitting a stone wall nowadays when it comes to notary publics willing to put their signature on certain documents. Is there a lawful way around that that would still be acceptable by the courts to complete uh, I, I'm, I'm going to use the term and I know agreed we not to use it before we started recording here, but for instance, a perfected lien. Okay. So, and for those viewers who don't know what a perfected lien is search for it. All right. Because this is not about perfected liens as such, but um, if we've got those two witness signatures, um, is it imperative that we have a public notary or is there an alternative to the public notary? Because I've heard all sorts of stories about thumbprint signature across it with a stamp and thumbprint with a signature across it without a stamp in the bottom right and all this kind of stuff. Um, can you clarify this notary problem or brick wall that we're hitting at the moment? There are, there are, I've asked my, um, my scribes and viewers of YouTube to notarize um, facts and details when I've um, expressed and publicly on public cast certain things that I've made promises I've given my word my word is my bond so I don't need the contract or anything so they've witnessed and notarized for me there so there are different you said public notary and notary public kudos because you need to everyone needs to research what a public notary is number one we'll start with that one and then what a notary public is and look at what actually research notary and notarizing in as well as the terms there in English and look at why the legal profession have them and what who is a notary and what does a notary do they generally in a witness uh, capacity they're not going to look at all of the document but they generally generally uh, witness um, th there is the one that is applying um, a signature to a document is that one that's applying a signature and they are connected to the clergy and it has um, it has a clerical um, you know, uh, Archbishop being the top of that um, chain of command. So it comes, it, it doesn't just witness, it looks at, um, and I've never used a notary um, per se, like what you're mentioning now, to, uh, to look and validate um, man and document and authenticity of all of that. I've um, notary protest, look at what a notary protest is, and um, you could, let's, let's go eat a little bit um, out the box. If you successfully serve your paperwork procedure, the three-letter conditional acceptance process that we use when we get a claim made upon man or the, 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 the legal fiction that is um, Mr. David, uh, Mr. John Smith, 
and you have that um, controversy at law to deal with, you would conditionally accept to stay in honour, and this is all about notaries, but just let me, yeah. you know, to stay in honour, you, um, you can conditionally accept. Um, if you argue it, you're going to create the controversy and the pre-action protocol eventually will time out and you will be deemed guilty. If you admit it um, and you, you, you say sorry and you submit your rights and you know everything like that, then perhaps you're going to end up in, in a lot worse off than what you necessarily would have been um, so we normally argue or we normally accept. And when I found out there was a third option, which is a conditional acceptance and uh, there's a process at law which um, lets you keep clean hands, stay in honour, and you say, OK, I hear there's a controversy and you think that I'm the person. I conditionally accept and you think I'm the person. Here's my um, paperwork, no letter one of three, which you've covered in, uh, in the document you sent me, by the way, which I think... Uh, I'm three quarters of the way through, so we need to touch upon that as we get into the end, my good man. But um, there's a process there that's known not just by uh, um, my good man. I don't know if uh, I should say your given name or just the observation deck, but uh, um, I'm, uh, I'm liking what I'm Rob, seeing Rob, there. In the Rob will be fine. Everyone knows me yeah. as Rob Robert, so it's fine. They, 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 don't, they, they don't get my corporate name because I didn't pick it myself anyway. So. <laughs> All right, Rob. Yes, bless. Uh, thank you. And uh, I, um, I, uh, I see that um, you know there's a claim and a controversy, and we deal with that, and we let them know that um, they've now got to accept. And uh, if they, after the um, the second letter, and they go into a fault, and then the third letter, they're in default, and um, we let them know that um, you know they, they've now um, reached a time out, and they've um, tacitly acquiesced to our conditional acceptance, so we've, we've kept in honour, we've got clean hands, we've put the liability back on the claimant. Remember what I said earlier, those that make the claim are obligated to provide the burden of proof to the material um, you know, facts of the matter, give us the evidence. And uh, if you have um, used notices such as um, what we've talked about and you've sent them via um, post Royal Mail and Royal Mail or, or courier, but generally over this side of the pond, um, yeah, way, you use, I mean, you can use, the, for those viewers in the UK, you can either use one of those or one of those. It, yeah. it, it's entirely up to you, but they're both signed for. The, the, the silver one costs about £6.50. This one's about £2.50. And um, to be honest with you, I've, I've found that they, yeah. they both get signed for, so it's entirely up to you. You know, but yeah, sorry, David, Car UP, carry on. Yeah, they got you UPS and that in America isn't a FedEx and thing. If you FedEx it or you be not to advertise companies, but this is how we need to break it down. Yeah. You can prove in a court of law that you, you see, if you send, there are rules in England and Wales where if you are doing legal um, business and it's, you send it commercial, um, non so that you send commercial stuff in domestic post, that's a no, no. That's against the, uh, the post office, the universal post office rules, it's internationally managed. So the UPU, when I say the postal service and FedEx, then universal um, post office and the universal post office postal union, um, it's a worldwide game here. So uh, even though we have different corporations and brands, they operate internationally on the same rules, international rules. Um, if you send commercial or legal stuff through domestic post or from a PO box number, that's a no-no. If we, man, send um, our, um, let me think now, um, acceptances and notices, they're not um, letters, they are notices we send, and we've got actually a notary in itself. Uh, delivery is acceptance, and the moment that we um, take a notice to a postal outlet, like in the post office, and the post office put on the, um, the signed for details at that moment where that union if they're international it should be the same but you need to validate this there's no legal advice being given here another disclaimer but um, you, you put that signed for guaranteed delivery recorded on that um, notice um, don't seal the envelope make sure the envelope with the notice is, is not sealed and when they give you the, the sticker to the outside get on the uh, the notice inside and put the same, there's like a little strip on there, a tiny one, you can put that on the uh, actual notice itself, otherwise when they open that envelope, if they take out the notice, they could say, it was an empty, I got your envelope, 
with your sign for sticker, but you forgot to put your notice inside everyone. No, we didn't, because at the point of uh, sending it to the post office, we left the envelope open, we put the sign for sticker on the outside of the envelope, and we asked the lady to take the little thin strip off, and we put a notice on the notice, you know, a line there to say inside, on the document inside, there's also got the reference from the outside on the inside. And at that moment, you've paid for that, it's deemed as delivered. The law delivery is acceptance. So even though you're in the post office still, it's gone to wherever you particulars to that uh, delivery and they don't um, respond. You can then, in a court of law, use that to prove that you have done the, you can prove in a court of law with the post office who then give it to Royal Mail. Royal Mail and the post office are separate companies over here. That's your notary. That's your proof. That's your witness to the things that you have done. So when they say, oh, we didn't get your such and such and we've clamped and stolen your car, we've, um, we've foreclosed on your house or we've whatever, they've defaulted and you need to prove that, you can prove that with your notary and notarise documents and witnesses. Yes, you've said um, in a private capacity, as it says in the Bible, um, and it's, uh, it's written in law, so there's different r rules. My law is the, is the Bible, to be fair, and I'm not here to preach, but a Christian nation, it stands, you know, the Queen has it, it, made promises on a dollar bill, in God we trust. So it's relevant, whether you like it or not, or whether you're religious or not, it, it's something that's respected more so than Constitution, Magna Carta. Well, I must Freeman. admit, David, it, it wasn't until recently that um, yeah. I'm not, I mean, my viewers know, and so does the rest of my family, I am not a religious person, period. Um, I, I would say the best, the closest I ever come to it is agnostic. There has to be something, but I haven't got a clue what it is. And, and, and all the research in 20 lifetimes probably wouldn't find the answer to that question either. Uh, to me, that's the whole point of, of life. But having said that, the Bible, which I have studied, don't get me wrong. I haven't just read. I've, I've studied the Bible and it wasn't until about 18 months ago I began to realize um, my, the phrase that came to mind is the Bible is a great learning book it's just a shame the church got hold of it because <laughs> be, be, because <laughs> as far as i'm concerned it does to, it's it's a book of contract and i would say uh, and and what i did was i made this distinction uh, talking about the bible now um, uh, in terms of contract law and equity and all the rest of it is it suddenly dawned on me that if you go to a church on a Sunday morning and you hear the sermon from whatever portion of the Bible that the, the priest or the vicar is reading from, you are getting English, public English. If you are in a secret society studying the Bible, you're getting the legalese version of, of the translation of what's just been said. Because what we've got to remember is the guy yeah. standing up front by the font is the one telling you what the interpretation should mean to you. And you're all sitting there nodding, going, okay, okay, that's what that means. And then when you get into the secret societies, it's like, okay, you know all that stuff we told everybody in the church? That's not it. It means this, guys. You know, so the Bible itself is, is literally that dual dictionary of <laughs> English and legalese. If, if, if you don't realize that what you're looking at is like, hang on a second. Like uh, the, one of the stories I told on my channel a few months back, the middle of last year was, uh, and I asked the question, I said, what do you think it means when it said that Jesus walked on the water? And they're like, well, he, he, he's the son of God. He walked up. No, 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 no. He's stomping all over maritime law. All right. He is walking on the water. What do you think Jesus did when he raised Lazarus from the dead? Well, he, he is the son of God. He was, no, 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 no. What he did was he got rid of the straw man and he raised Lazarus from the dead because he told him who he really was and he wasn't the dead fictional entity. So you could look at it in so many different ways and reinterpret what's sitting in front of your face if you come from the right point of view. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying those ways are correct or anything, but they were kind of revelation to me when I started looking at them in, in equity and contract rather than in religious parables, if, if that makes sense to you. 
Yeah, that's what we do. We found it. That's exactly how we look at it. We found that the literalists are the ones that generally are the lost sheep. People, man has studied the Bible for 40 to 60 years and has no further clarification on it. Whereas I, yourself and others have looked at it, um, as I said to Santos, and um, you know, I'd like to speak to Jordan Maxwell um, if we could be so lucky one day just to get some, you know, uh, yeah, further bits out. But uh, the literalists lost. We come along and we have a look at it and we make examinations. And perhaps it wasn't Jesus that died on the cross; it was actually justice what what died on the cross there. So if you are a literalist and you've, uh, I've been called a pagan. I've been called a devil worshiper and so forth because of how and the apocryphas, what, what, what's contained within. There are codes there, and there are stories that are maybe seven layers deep, and I'm only on the top. I'm not a, a scholar of the Bible at all, but we've learned to, to look at these um, parables and stories, and they have got, um, when, you, when you are of a, a lateral thinking mind and you are looking and, you know, you chat to different colour um, family members, darker-skinned family members, and as I mentioned, the Abrahamic face, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism and we all get together and put our differences to one side and have a chat it's amazing yeah. what you can actually learn my 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 from brothers and sisters that go to the mosque are incredibly interested in the fact that they go and pray five times a day um facing mecca to um to um, um what was i going to say to um you know the prophet muhammad peace be upon him and allah but yet the allah cannot hear you brother and um, the Prophet Muhammad's teachings are wasted on you, brother, because you are baptised into, in my opinion, and in our discovery, into, and this is just one instance, um, into the Christian church. If you have that certificate and you call yourself Mr. Ali of date of birth and surname, then you're not Mr. Ali. And you've lost the contact with Allah and the Prophet's teachings. And when they hear this, they're like, hey, buddy, buddy, and they go on and they're speaking their own language to the family. And David, you must come around and... We, 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 that's what I mean, retainment of rights and the, 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 the Quran, the, the, the scriptures themselves have all got the similar messages stemming from the Abrahamic faiths and um, lest we be deceived, family, and, and uh, we have been I, deceived. I, 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 always thought the there, yeah. I always thought the baptism <laughs> ceremony, as, 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 with all its pomp and circumstances, is, guys, you're, all you've just done is just made another contract. You know, you, you, you've just signed another contract, okay, you know, at, at, at an early age. You got your birth certificate, and now you've baptised them. So what was left of the physical, you've just given the spiritual away to whatever the contract or whatever church, whatever religious house that you happen to be in, you, you, you've given that away. And that, that living, breathing life there should be allowed free will. I mean, my, I'll be honest with you, my daughters, um, I didn't, I didn't impose anything on them. And I said, look, when you're old enough to understand and make your own choices, you will. But I'm not going to make those choices for you, you know, in, in terms of, uh, 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 of religion. But now that I look back yeah. on it, I think that was the right decision because what I, the, I, the very idea of free will itself, which comes back to all of this remedy stuff that we've been talking about. Um, I mean, the bottom line, uh, David, for me is that, I, I guess my tenacity for finding remedy is because I abhor, as, as well as probably many millions do, somebody imposing their will, thus at the same time restricting my free will. You know, and, and to me, that's intolerable. It's like, I don't care who you set yourself up for, you know, when someone turns around and says, oh, you should have respect for authority. Well, I have the utmost respect for the creator. Because that's the only authority. There is no other authority. So if you're thinking that you're going to put a uniform on and, and spell police, then, you know, um, and say, I deserve authority because I've got a revenue generating jacket on. It's, it's never going to happen, you know, because it, 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 for me, it's abhorrent. I mean, look at the, some of the scenes that we're seeing now in public uh, about the excessive powers that are being used on people i mean i even read two days ago over the weekend i mean for those of you in 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 the states um we we had a lot of snow here uh friday night saturday uh, etc and like many people my family and, and and my daughter and my my wife and her friend we took the dog out and we had a whale of a time in the snow you know um 
difficult to find my dog because he was white, but there you go. But the point being is, I actually read that the UK police were fining people 200 pounds for having snowball fights in a field and, and riding their, their sledges down the hill. I mean, what kind of world are we now living in? What kind of country are we living in when the, 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 the police are fining people for playing in the snow? I mean, it, it's got to stop at some point. It really has, which is why I think it's so important that people like yourself, David, myself, and many, many others really do try and help as many people as possible in terms of remedy of all descriptions because if we don't do this now we never will and i think it's needed now more so than ever before in living history you know um i, I know our time um we've been rabbiting on for quite some time david and i and i um i appreciate this is the first call on, on you and i don't want to put any more spots on you i know we were going to talk about a little bit of debt and what you've just read but don't worry about it we can we can jump on that on um uh, uh, because given what we've already discussed and i hope viewers you've you've enjoyed david coming on the show because I'm, I'm going to have him back again and we will be doing a part two and then hopefully when yours truly gets his head wrapped around live streams we will be doing live streams i have been doing my homework david don't worry um <laughs> So we, we will be doing live streams later on uh, in, uh, I, I presume it's, it's going to be in a very short period of time. Don't, don't worry about it. It's not going to be uh, one of those promises I'm making and then it six months passes. Um, so I'm, I'm getting familiar with OBS studio and all the rest of it. So it's fine. Um, but David, is there anything you want to say just to wrap up um, this particular one? And I know it seems we're cutting short, but then, as I say, folks, we'll, we'll, we'll do a part two. Don't worry. We'll have David back and we can get into a little bit more detail and minutiae. And one thing I would say before, before David, uh, I'm going to give David the last word here is, uh, for those viewers who, who, who want to, um, think, don't, don't put them in the comments or anything like that. Think of the sorts of questions, um, that you might want to ask David on his next, um, uh, show that, uh, that we're going to do here a part two. Uh, sorry, I said don't put them in the comments. Put them in the comments. Sorry. Um, put your questions in the comments and I'll collate the ones because obviously there's going to be some repetitions. Um, and um, make sure that the questions are focused and articulate and no you know, no disrespect to anybody, but neither David nor myself will start answering questions on specific and individual cases. That's not what we're here for. It's your journey. It's your knowledge. And there is a lot of material out there. And unless you do your own homework and, and you travel your own journey, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of support, but don't expect anybody to take on your cases because uh, as David has already said, and I will repeat the same thing as the caveat, is we are not giving legal advice. We are just giving our point of view on things for entertainment um, and educational purposes only and nothing more. All right. So, David, I'll, I'll give you the last word, sir, um, and uh, you can wrap up this particular episode. Oh, bless. Thank you. It's been such an honour and a privilege. Uh, I can't believe we've finally done it. And uh, Indy has met the observation deck. Uh, <laughs> Not a problem, mate. Honour. Um, you know, we like to retain your rights, um, no matter what um, landmass you're on, what country you're on. You've just made a comment there about the local constabulary and officers, troopers, etc. Um, you know, the Eastern Bloc, the uh, across the pond in Americas. Um, I've been to, you know, Bosnia. I've been to the pyramids of the, of the sun. Um, my wife is from Hungary, Magyar, and I uh, travelled down from Magyar to, um, you know, the, the sorry, it's not Sarajevo, uh, Bosnia, Viseko Hill, um, where Dr. Sam Osmanovic is, uh, is there and... Uh, I've seen a lot of the world and um, we're all in the same boat, so to speak. And we want to get off the boat, back on the land, and um, we will look at how you can, you know, retain your rights, so to speak. So when, um, when there is a controversy at law, um, we, like to, we like to let you know how you can argue it or agree with it or accept it. And uh, it's, about, it's about your rights. And uh, it's about if you do not enforce your rights, it seems that this world will take you to the cleaners. And if anybody wants to say you're a criminal, I don't think you're a criminal. Um, you know, we're in, in these, these are civil issues. I don't really deal with any, and our trusts don't deal with any 
um, criminal issues. We deal with civil issues and I have a job to do. And I call it a sacred contract. So um, if you look at the details, uh, um, Brother Rob will put the, uh, the link into the website. What's the name of the website, David? Um, it says splspro.com. So you can find that in the details. It's uh, yeah, I'll put sovereign. that in the link below. Sovereign related. There's a trust in Genesis in the Old Testament. Thank you. Um, Adam and Eve, if you're wondering about trusts and what, what a trust is, I'd like to explain this. People often say, and it'll only take me a couple of minutes, but it's important. They say trusts are too complicated. Um, trusts, um, I don't like them. You know, illegal trust, ecclesiastical trust, and they're a private trust. And in Genesis, the first book of Moses, the creator, he says to the children, Adam and Eve, this is, again, literalists. They don't like the way that I speak and the way that we paraphrase stuff. The creator says, I'm going to leave you two. I'm going to be back in a bit. Do what you want. But don't touch that tree. You know, and uh, he said, don't eat the apples. Um, you know, from the, or don't, don't eat from the tree of uh, good and evil, knowledge, etc. However you want to look at it. I wasn't there. And it's written many different ways. The creator comes back and the children have talked to the snake. And um, they're wearing a fig leaf around their genitalia. And um, he can see that now they're aware that they was naked and they've broken the trust. When I was researching trusts and I came across bear trusts, I went, bear trust? That's, um, that's a specific trust, B-A-R-E. And uh, I went, that's a bit like naked, naked. And the only time, you know, my brain works on these different words and I'm like a little robot sometimes, number Johnny Five. I'm like, naked trust, and we find that Adam and Eve was naked in the trust there given by the Creator. Um, trusts are, you know, ecclesiastical. They are Roman and legal. The Romans didn't make trusts up. Um, you know, um, other big names in the game didn't make trusts up. You don't need to spend thousands of pounds with us um, to, to work out what a trust is um, or how to use a trust. Um, we use private trusts, which is what we've got. Myself and Robert have created a, a trust, a private trust. Um, between us and an agreement and um, we'd like to introduce you to that because trust is the one true currency of man and children are our diamonds and our, our true wealth so with all that we've talked about today to hone it back in to something that's practical that's how you'll get along in the, in the, in, in the world and in your private affairs and how to defend your, your blood, your property, your assets um, oh, little Johnny, he's, he's, he's going to be a little asset to you, he is. So when I say asset, um, with regard to blood and property, you know, we speak like this all the time. It's just yeah. that the language has been very clever, much like I said at the beginning, with the legalese looking and sounding and writing like Oxford, Anglo, Collins, but it isn't. You know, there's little, little tweaks they've done across time which have left us thinking that we're criminals and that we're, we're idiots and you're neither. And I love you all, you know, from, from the bottom of my heart. I love you all for who you are and what you are. And uh, civil administrative issues we can help you with and defend with trust and agreements. And uh, it's the blood we're looking to protect ultimately. We're not after TDA accounts. I'm not interested in that. Moving to the private and administering your mind, your clarity. This was to introduce you predominantly to david get a bit of background off him what what um splspro.com covers in terms of help so as i say i'll leave a description in the link below um and on top of that for those of you who haven't already done it you've disappointed me go and buy my latest book diffusing the debt bomb i've already had some great reviews and we will be talking about that and some of the stuff that we've got uh, coming up later on this year and we will go into a little bit more detail then of specific areas of life because I can tell all of you now and I'm sure David would agree without running all over the place like a chicken with your head cut up, there are three pillars three pillars that you need to be focusing on uh, for your studies and only do one pillar at a time because you'll find that they'll merge pillar one banks finances etc pillar two trusts Okay, how to protect your assets and pillar three status, personal, private. Okay, if you can, if you can get that trilateral knowledge in your head, banks, trusts, and status, eventually you're going to be bulletproof. But you need to be able to stand your ground. All right, David, that just leaves me to say thank you very much for coming on the observation deck. I really appreciate you uh, being here. 
And um, I look forward to having you back again in part two. Um, and I'll, I'll try that myself. There you go. There you go, mate. Gosh, um, yes. Yes. I did it earlier, but I pointed at the screen and not the camera. So I thought that looked really stupid because I'm not as cool as you are. Um, but, um, it, it's been great. As I say, I'll leave a link in the description below. I hope you give it a thumbs up as well. Pop over to um, splspro.com. Um, see what the uh, site's got to do. I suggest you do actually get membership because unlike a lot of other sites, I, I, I bought membership to David's site uh, probably on my first visit there because, uh, and it'll be a nice surprise, uh, a whole year's membership is, and you'll find out when you get over there. All right. But there is, a, there, is a blue, there is a blue F in the top right-hand corner, so um, you can also say hello on Facebook. We have got it. So the ones that are hard up or uh, out of uh, promises and credits, you can link to the blue Facebook, and then you can get some documents from the file section there. So thank you yeah, very and much. You and, and believe me, you know, hand on heart, David, I, I, I took all your documents, mate. I read them with absolute – I was stuck to them, and I'm thinking, yeah. I've, and I learned an awful lot from that. So what I will say to everybody, um, which is what you normally hear me on the voiceover, but um, I'm doing it live now. So question everything, believe nothing and stay curious and I'll see you on deck very soon.